cooking, no junk food, and don't touch the radio. Now, back to the show. And welcome back. And, you know, for so long, for so many years, women were told they had one option. And that was hormone replacement therapy. That was the only option they had. And then, of course, the Women's Initiative came out and the study came out. And, of course, it was it was told they were told to quickly get women off the study. And let's find out right from the from the doctor directly, because she is the assistant clinical professor um, of obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive sciences at, at Mount Sinai. And she is with us today. Dr. Brightman, welcome. It's nice to have you back. Thanks for having me back, Frankie. So what was the, why was the study stopped? Well, the study was stopped um, in 2002 because they reached a point where they realized, oh, boy, uh, hormones may not be all they're cracked up to be. So this is in 2002. A lot of women were routinely placed on hormone replacement. And at that time, many doctors panicked, many patients panicked, and women, uh, many women were abruptly told, you know, you must stop hormones. And Subsequent studies have come out showing that they're really hormones are probably safer than we originally thought, particularly for a younger group of women, a, women, a group of women that um, don't have certain risk factors. For example, they're not at risk for breast cancer. They haven't had breast cancer. They're not at risk for clotting. So, so that's, a great, that's great news. You know, there definitely is a group of women for whom hormone replacement is indicated, and they really benefit across the board. So that's great. And um, the interesting thing I find in my practice is that you know, so many women start having menopausal-like symptoms for a long period of time. In fact, you know, the JAMA study, which was published just a few weeks ago, shed light on the fact that women really can have menopausal symptoms for, you know, on the average of seven years, sometimes before the, their last period. And the good news is there are many options for women as they make this transition, and these options aren't necessarily hormonal. Um, and so, you know, that's what you know, I'd love to discuss with you the yes, fact please. that there are non-hormonal options. Yes, please do. So traditionally we talked about hormone replacement, and then the next wave um, of research came out, and doctors started and researchers started focusing on pharmaceutical ways in which women can non-hormonally be treated. And so there are certain mood stabilizers, anticonvulsants, um, and some pain medications that actually can be used to help and some high blood pressure medications actually that can be used to offset some of the symptoms people face as they head towards menopause. And these mm-hmm. would include the most common symptoms of night sweats, hot flashes, and trouble sleeping. More recently, women really have been asking for non-pharmaceutical ways of treating their symptoms. And I'm very excited about this because there And I'm is- one of them, and, I want, and my audience is one because this show is not about medications because we're not deficient in aspirin and ibuprofen. You know, right. I, want, right. I want us to be able to have some alternatives. So go yes. ahead, yes. So there really, really are. So there's been much banter over the years about women taking black cohosh, soy products, evening primrose oil um, as alternatives. And, you know, again, these are things women should still talk to their doctors about them because there are potential risks with some of them. What's new and exciting is the fact that there's a, a new body of literature out showing the scientific safety of many of these products, including a product that's been available in Europe for the last 15 years or so, known as Swedish Purified Swedish Pollen Extract. The trade name in the United States is Relizin. It's been on the market for the last year. And it's a non-estrogen, non-hormonal nutritional supplement. It does not carry the risks of estrogen. And it's really been shown in clinical studies to decrease the incidence of night sweats, hot flashes during the day, and improve sleep. And what that translates into is a better quality of life for women who benefit from sleeping and not having this disrupted sleep because of night sweats. So it's really, really good news. And um, that is just so, it's so funny because I was, this is such a coincidinky coincidence Mm -hmm. that I was at the um, health symposium in New York and found out about this product. Oh, you did? And they recommended you as a guest, and it's not how I got you, but that's so funny. Yeah, well, it's, um, I I feel that this really, this product has tremendous um, promise for many women. Many of my patients have really benefited from this. 
you know, um, and many. And how how do you take home. this? How do you take it? And so it's really easy. And, and really, spell it for, spell it for us, so, please, doctor. So R E L I Z as in zebra E N, and the website relevant dot com um, is a great resource with lots of information citing the clinical studies. Um, if if anyone's interested in the science behind this. Um, and I know that profiles. Dr. Selman, my dear friend, was very impressed and actually dragged me over to the booth. <laughs> it, what I really like about this is the fact that it's been studied scientifically because we Western doctors, if you will, you know, like that science. And I think patients do, you know, pa- and consumers do. W- women are educated and they want to know that something has been, you know, proven. It's just not a random sort of uh, finding and so relevant is taken as two tablets really any time of day um, consistently with shown clinical benefits after taking the product for two to three months and women just in general feel better in addition to having an alleviation of their night sweats and hot flashes during the day wonderful that's a great tip that's a great it, tip. it is it's a really it's a new option for us to offer patients um, there has been some wonderful work too about using primrose oil and you talked to you mentioned that in some of the other oils and and how therapeutic they can really be yes yes and again a lot of these you know while finally there's some research being done to show the you know clinical benefits of women who are you know to women who are using it a lot of it's been really trial and error you know and as healthcare providers we've been less you know on target and less knowledgeable you know about you know how it's used and how often to use often to use it and whatnot. And my feeling is, you know, as long if a patient is really responding to using something like primrose oil or, or a product like black cohosh, I think it's great. Um, you know, initially studies indicated that these products were show little benefit over that of placebo. But you know, my feeling honestly is, if you're the one woman who truly benefits, then go ahead and use it. Right. Right. Because it's so, you know, I think one thing that women need to realize, and men need to realize for that reason, you know, this is not one size fits all. Every woman is different, and their care truly needs to be individualized. So do you believe that men go through andropause as well? Well, I do to some extent. You know, I think when you think, when you look at libido across the years, um, particularly younger men and compare them to an older group of men, you know, their their libido, their interest in sex, their desire tends to diminish. So I think they do, but it's not as well described. Um, I think they want to be looked at on, on par with women, but with women, you know, there really is an absolute demarcation of menopause. It's a cessation of menstrual function. And that's, the body changes. Absolutely. You know, men have been, even the name is 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 so <laughs> right i mean come on right 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 well it's menopause menopause menstruation it's menses menstrual yeah. cycle so, what's up know, with that doctor i don't know i don't think we can escape that and certainly i'm not going to recreate you know the dictionary but the, the um, difference though and i want to make this really clear that women as we age and this is really important at one point women were thought to shrivel up inside and outside when they went through menopause and they weren't really vibrant women anymore just because they could not have babies and i think that we're showing showing the world today that and suzanne summers is going to be on dancing with the stars mm-hmm. and she's she's starting on monday night with the new cast of dancing with the stars and i think that her face has been shown as this is what 66 can look like look like today well i think you know it's so important and i certainly see this in my practice that women look at menopause as a real home homework sign of aging and yes it occurs as we get older but the truth it is it is not the end of a woman's sexuality women remain sexual beings they can remain beautiful and i think it's really important to debunk some of the myths that are out there and we really do need people to demonstrate to other women that you can remain vibrant and you will not get dried up and you know regardless of whether or not a woman transitions through menopause and wants hormones to remain you know to maintain tissue integrity prevent vaginal dryness and treat all the other things with the go along with menopause there all there are alternative ways that these symptoms can be treated effectively so again
again, it's something that you know women really need to talk to their health care providers about. And I really feel very strongly that if a woman can't have this conversation with her health care provider, then it's time to certainly, you know, possibly make yeah. a change. Hey, because can the, you give yeah. out your, um, give out all of your um, information, please? So for me, if someone wants to reach me, um, they can reach me through my um, office, which the phone number is 212-348-7800 or through eswobgyn.com. That's eastsidewomensobgyn.com. Com. Thank you so much. What a pleasure having you with us today, Doctor. Thank you for having me again. It was so nice speaking with you. Oh, no, it's our pleasure. Come back again. And we will be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. This is Frankie Boyer. This is Frankie Boyer. Today, my guest is Dr. Janet Angel, Vice President at Nature's Sources, the makers of Absorbate. She's here to share some exciting news about enzymes. I didn't know how important enzymes were. And doctor, welcome. It's nice to have you with us. So do we need to take enzymes daily? Absolutely, Frankie. We need to have enzymes in our diet, in our life, every single day. In fact, your body will be dependent upon exogenous enzymes your entire lifetime. Those are the enzymes that exist in nature. And although our bodies produce some enzymes, as we begin to age and under duress, the system begins not to produce enough enzymes. So you will always need enzymes on a daily basis and with each meal. Okay. To learn more about Absorbade, you can go to naturessources.com or call directly at 1-800-827-7656. That's 1-800-827-7656. This is Frankie Boyer with another tip. Imagine you're only 46 years old and the doctor tells you your life is over. You have no choice but to search for a natural way to support your body's ability to regain its own health. That was my story, and in January 2007, I found out about an unknown major scientific breakthrough in nanonutrition discovered in Europe that enables our bodies to repair all our DNA and rebuild a strong, healthy body. Today, I'm 56 years young with an excellent health report and living an amazing quality of life. Even my brain works better now than it did when I was in my 20s. You can learn all about this by going to OceansAlive.com so you too can maximize your own quality of life. Call 1-866-271-7595. This is your daily dose of Frankie Boyer. One good thing about it is you just can't get enough. And welcome back. It's Frankie Boyer, and um, it's me soloing, and I just wanted to um, just say a couple of things. First of all, there's a picture of Ian Clark on the blog with me. Um, It was at the Simcoa party, a big party that we were at Friday night. This was after the Dr. O'Hare party. It was like 12 o'clock at night when that picture was taken. I am exhausted, but that's a picture of Ian and and Frankie Boyer on the blog today at 12 o'clock at night. Um, Secondly, I wanted to just mention a couple of things. We are having... um, We are being preempted on Tuesday for St. Patrick's Day, so there will not be a repeat, nor will there be a show. And I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, The station does an annual celebration every St. Patrick's Day, and so this happens. So I just want you all to know that um, I will not be on air on Tuesday, which is uh, the 17th, and that is St. Patrick's Day. So, uh, you know. There's a a day um, happening on the Ides of March, yes, the 15th of March, and that is, it's called the Good Deed Day, Good Deeds Day, and it means to do something that you normally wouldn't do, maybe it's take your rubber gloves, your plastic gloves, and go out and pick up some trash. I don't know about where you guys are, but in Boston, it is disgusting 
underneath all of this gross black snow. It's black now. It's not even gray. It's black. It's disgusting. But underneath it all is trash and tons of it because the pickups for for um because of of the, all of the snow they didn't do the garbage disposals and I mean the garbage pickup and uh, it's just a mess. So I know that they do have annual pickup days and that people volunteer but this is Sunday. So if you can do something really good uh maybe donate an extra few dollars or buy someone who needs a cup of coffee or if you see somebody on the street give them some food or whatever. Uh, it's a good thing to do. So, uh, you know, try and make Sunday a good D-Day. And my philosophy is that if you are recycling, it's always a good D-Day. You know, um, don't just leave garbage and, and, and clutter. Try and recycle. I, I try to do that. I, I bring things all over the place because I just really hate to have anything be thrown out. I really do. I just think the landfills have enough, enough of everything and we really need to be aware that we have more than most in the world. Most in the world, we really do. No matter how bad things are, we have more than most in the world. We're very blessed to be living in this country. You can, you know, moan and groan all you want. You may not agree with the political status, whatever. But I'm telling you, we have most, more than most. And so we are very blessed in many ways. So make sure you do something good. If you're going to be moving and you don't want to take all the things with you, there are going to be people that need what you don't want or like what you don't want or or desire something that you no longer want or need. So Try and find resources and, you know, the Salvation Army, the Veterans VA right here in, in Boston. There's so many different organizations that really and truly could use your stuff that you don't want to use anymore. Um, or start a recycle bin or start a recycle club or do a, a fun event where you, you know, where everybody brings what they're not using and switch it off and have a switch meet or something. It could be a fun thing. Uh, so that's this Sunday. I also wanted to let you know that I am expecting my shipment of face food um, in the next few days. And so I, as soon as I get it, you will get it. So I still um, think there's a couple of bottles left. I haven't done the math yet, but I think there are a few bottles left if you're interested. And so call me after the show at 508 eight seven eight seventeen eighty two. My mailbox is full. Um, I just haven't had a chance to empty the mailbox on the cell phone. It's five oh eight eight seven eight seventeen eighty two. Um but do call me and keep me um if you're interested. It's eighty dollars for the regular and a hundred ten for the super. And I just want to say that I it stings and it smells. Yes, and we're paying for something that stings and smells because the result is a fabulous looking skin, fabulous looking skin. So um, do check out, um, if you're interested, do call me rather. It's all natural. It's organic. You could eat it if you want to. Why would you? But you could. It tastes terrible, but it does. I just want make, I want to make it a real clear thing. It stings. It stings when you put it on really bad for some. It doesn't sting as much for me because I've been using it for so many years now, but it does sting. And it has a very strong odor. I don't mind the odor. I actually think it's refreshing. And I love putting it on in the morning. It's like a real wake-me-up, a real wake-me-up. So anyway, that's with the face food. And give me a call after the show at 508 eight seven eight seventeen eighty two um and let me know if you're interested. The other piece that I wanted to tell everyone is that um I thought that the quality, you know, I've 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 been, you know, not happy about a lot of the foods that we get in some of the health food stores. But I was so impressed with the quality of food at this last expo. The ingredients are cleaner. People are getting it that are making these foods. They're cleaning up their acts. And I think you're going to see that 
reflected in supermarkets soon. Um, the pizzas, the, the gluten-free pizzas, they're not as gross as they used to be. They're not as chalky tasting. They're not as cardboard tasting. They're using whole, whole foods. They're not using rice and they're not using corn. They're using teff and, and different ancient grains and seeds and they're delicious. But that pizza that she, um, that Sarah just gave out that, that's a really beautiful recipe. A lot of people have done it with cauliflower as well as with zucchini. So you can do it either way. And you just take the cauliflower and you crumble it and you add the eggs and you make a crust and it's really, really delicious. It really is yummy. Um, and I would use almond flour if you don't have the, um, um, chickpea flour, but I, you know, either way, or a tiny amount of coconut flour would work as well. But, you know, coconut flour is very drying, so you have to be careful. It absorbs a lot of liquid. You want to be careful. Um, but I'm really impressed with lo the food and the amount of whole grains and nutrient-dense products that were at this trade show. Everything was chia, from drinks to no matter where you went, the chia seed is here to stay, and it is uh, a good thing. Hemp seeds, everybody's doing stuff with hemp. And I have to tell you, the biggest craze at the show were coconut chips. This is the biggest, the biggest right now is co are coconut chips. Let me tell you the problem is that they're loaded with different ingredients, if you want real coconut chips, I would get them unsweetened if you can, unprocessed, and just bake them in the oven yourself with coconut oil and sprinkle any of your favorite sugar replacements. And so, okay, someone wanted that Sarah Vance's uh, information. I'll get that to you. It's on my blog. You know, I do this blog every day. I pay a, pay a lot of money every month for that blog. And the blog is at frankieboyer.com. And the blog is, you just click on uh, Chessie's picture, me and Chessie walking on the beach. And um, that's, that's the blog. And on it every single day, it has every single thing that you could want. There's the picture right now of me and Ian. And if you scroll all the way down, it has the lifestyle show first. And then it has the um, health show, Sarah Vance. And it's rebalancelife.com is the website. It's a, a plan that she's put together by fixing and resetting your metabolism with 10 sep simple keys. And it's getting off the sugar is one of them. Putting back healthier fats is the other one. And coconut oil is thermogenic, so it means that it burns fat. It's microbial. I, it's just like... I'm just telling you, it's the perfect oil. It's the perfect oil. It really is. Um, soups were really big at the show. Really, really big. I've never seen so many soup companies out there. And they were really delicious soups. Really delicious. And uh, nutritious and delicious. And again, this beef broth, um, bone broth rather, Everywhere you went, bone broth is here to stay. There are actual coffee shops that are now in New York City that are setting, selling bo uh, broth, bone, bone broth. There are bone broth kiosks. That's all they're selling. So it's it's very big. It's very, very big. And to think that our grandmothers and uh, mothers did this just naturally is amazing. I can't believe we're out of time. Okay, so don't forget, Tuesday, we will be preempted for St. Patty's Day. And um, we will be back again tomorrow, though, with another edition of the Frankie Boyer Show. Thanks for listening, everybody. And make it a great day and smile.
The preceding program was wholly sponsored and produced by Frankie Boyer, who is responsible for its content. Before beginning any health or